<laughs> oh gosh guys that's fun that is so much fun come here you big old hussy i love fishing i love it i love it man we're down here in texas on a lake i've never been first fish we saw right there we caught that one what a beautiful beautiful specimen isn't that fun guys hey you guys need to stick around it's gonna be an awesome project e i got a feeling girl there she goes man that's fun springtime fishing it does not get any better i really don't know how today's going to go down uh that's the first fish we we pitched to a hole in the grass happened to see that fish up there there I, i'd have to think a lot of fish are done spawning obviously there's still some spawning it's going to be a fun day today you guys i i, I don't know how it's all going to go down i got a top water out i got an agent e out i got a, a chigger crawl out but we're going to talk about something. We're going to catch some bass and hopefully some more big ones like that one. Such a critical deal, like to figure out exactly where they'll bite your bait at. I just, I kind of keep moving it over a few inches, a few inches, a few inches. And then I found a spot that like he gets really upset, you know, and it's just a little fish. There's a big one hanging out here is why we stopped. But uh, there's just always going to be a size you know, like a quarter or a half dollar, somewhere in there. And, and you would think, that's why you see me making so many casts, because I'm just, I'm moving it over just a little bit each time, trying to figure out what spot triggers that fish. Oh, he's got it. Oh, he swam off with it. <laughs> I like to really be sure they got it. Like, he's ate this thing quite a few times. I'm, I'm going to make sure he's got it. I just, I don't ever want to snag one. And it inevitably happens accidentally. But if you'll take your time with them when you get them biting, just keep, make sure they got it. I, you know, just think about flipping when you're not sight fishing and you feel that bite. I like to let them swim off with it. You know, just, that's the kind of bite I'm looking for in there while I'm fishing this, you know, he'll, he hits it lots of times, but he's hitting it and blowing it out super, super quick. I feel like to find that spot, a lot of times those fish, when they enter and exit the bed, they will always swim over or hold really close if, if they're sitting still of that spot, you know, they're going to, they're sitting as close to it as they possibly can. And, and it's usually the direction they're facing. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're looking for it. Got it. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Now this is the male. There's one up there that would eat this one. There's like a super big one up there. It's one of those things you just kind of got to be patient with. All right. Oh, man, that's a nice one, isn't it? Nice one. I love it. I love it. Look how fat and pretty those fish are. Got a little tail rub you can see right here where he's been rubbing the bottom. Thanks, buddy. All right, go right back up there and do your deal. Each fish is different. Like, each fish is different. Some of them, they don't want you to be aggressive. Make multiple casts. Some of them, they may not you know, swim underneath your line. Like I start out with big line, 25 every time. But if I notice they don't get in that bed with big line, then I start going down in line size until they get comfortable. Uh, you know, that fish there, he finally faced my bait and then I just hopped it up and he ate it and just sat there. Like, like he had it for probably two or three seconds. I'm, you can kind of watch in the footage, I, I'm pulling it tight and I'm like, I'm, I know he's got it, but I want to make sure. And uh, Man, he had it. Like, he was just sitting there holding it. He didn't spit it out. Like you, And, and I, it took me a while. You know, it took me five, ten minutes to get that fish comfortable enough with that. I don't know. I, I love it. It's like, it's like a, I don't know. It's just it's a lot like deer hunting because you got to be sneaky. Each fish is different. They're temperamental. I got to get another bait out. Let's do that again. Oh, 
crap. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at another spot and I just throw up on the bank and my stuff like is going 50 feet that way. I'm looking over here and I threw up there just to be having a bait in the water and uh, my stuff's going crazy. Still trying to find that great big one. So, you know, one thing that, that I think is really important, like, you know, I just saw a couple fish right here. I got right up on top of them. I'm just gonna put a waypoint on that, then come back. And I also wanna mark it. Like the waypoint will get you close, but I'm gonna mark it, you know, just like right out in front of, you know, that, that piece of wood right there. I know there's a bed. So when I, I'm gonna let them fish get back up there, get settled back down. Then as I ease back up the bank, I'll know exactly where it is. And, and, and the easiest bed fish to always catch is one that you can stay the furthest away from. So we're gonna come back and hopefully catch that fish right there. Okay, so I just found a fish here and I'm, my first cast up there, that fish took off. But I don't wanna bring my bait out of the bed in that scenario or even out of the vicinity. I'm just leaving it there. Now that fish is just swimming back in there. And so I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer, try to get its attention. Now, oh, oh, she's fixing to bite it. So many times, you know, like in early in my career when they take off like that, I'd go ahead and reel in and then make another cast real quick. And I think that's the wrong thing to do. I want my bait in that scenario to be there when she gets back or he, uh, because that fish is spooking from the initial cast or the presentation. I think it's really important to remember that. Like when they swim out, leave it there. So when they come back in, it's right there in their face and, and, and to start up, you know, to, to start your process. So I've worked it through there now. I've got to make another cast and I'm sure that fish is going to take off again. And I can tell that fish is a little line wary because when I get my line over it, it doesn't like it. Oh gosh. I thought she ate it. I found where she got really aggressive. I, I'm gonna make that same exact cast and she's going at it again. I missed it. Oh. Got her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so fun. It's just like, it's like hunting, but hunting for bass, you know? <laughs> We saw that fish earlier and we came back. Now we caught it. That one's got a little black lipstick on it. Old Jimmy Houston be kissing it. You can see right there. Sweet, 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 sweet. Thanks, buddy. Oh, I got him. All right, guys. I got him in the back of the shell. Looky here, guys. Look at the size of this turtle. Look at the size of that turtle, would you? Holy smokes. That thing is a dinosaur. Holy smokes. I want to grab him. He is so cool. I'd like to get that out of him. Golly, if I could get him up, I'd grab his tail. Or at least the back side of his. He made a move towards my hand. <laughs> oh. oh <laughs> Stick it in there. Stick it all in. Got it. <laughs> I just, that thing's like a dinosaur. I didn't want to have my hook in him. I just, I would have felt bad. Oh, but man, they do that good because took my arm off. <laughs> oh, I was trying to get him to bite my little bluegill. I wanted to show you guys that. I mean, they've got one of those at Bass Pro. It's that size. Its head's that big. They said it's 125 years old. Think about that for a second. That was before we had cars and, and all this stuff going on. So it's 2020. 
that turtle was born in 1900. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I ain't saying that's a hundred year old turtle. You guys watching may know, but that's a big turtle. I bet you it's every bit of 50 to 70 years old. You think about that, it's older than I am. I'm glad I got it out though. I got the, I got it all out. Yeah, I did. Had to, had to recruit my camera guy. <laughs> Is my pole all right? <laughs> Good job, Jeremy. All right, back to fishing, back to fishing. Really important to change your baits up. You know, right here I got a, a fish that just wouldn't react to, to my chigger crawl. So I picked up the Agent E, and he's bit like instantly with that thing. Just, oh, dang it. <laughs> so I just picked up the, you know, little Agent E bluegill bait, and um, I've got it on too heavy of a rod. I got this on a heavy action rod for that close, but we had him like second flip with it. You know, if you're new to, to, to sight fishing, I always tell people to start out with a bait you can see. And one of the reasons, you know, like a white bait, one of the reasons is it's kind of an optical illusion. You see the bed there, but you actually have to throw, you know, 10, 15 feet behind it, depending on how deep the water is, to actually get your bait in the bed, you know. And with a, a bait you can see, you can see, you know, see it as it comes into that bed. So it's really important, you know, when you're new to it, uh, to figure out where you got to cast in order for that bait to get to, to the depth to hit that bed. You know, on, on another note, being able to see, you also got to have good polarized sunglasses. That's just a must. You cannot try to sight fish without glasses or with especially polarized ones. So get ones that you got good shading on each side. You know, glasses are a must when you're sight fishing. It's a must in all fishing, but especially sight fishing. You know, a mistake a lot of people make is that, that they only look for those bright, shiny beds. And, you know, some lakes that maybe that's the only kind of beds there are, but like here where we're at, you know, there's a few shiny beds, but there's far more black beds. And it'll maybe be shiny around, like, around it like a tire, but then the middle will be dark and black. And uh, don't forget that, like, you know, whatever lake you're doing this on, you've got to establish right off the bat, am I looking for, for dark spots or light spots? Because all lakes are different. Oh gosh, dang it, that was a giant. Mm. That is part of bed fishing though. I mean, there's just, they take it funny at times, you know, and there's just nothing you can do about it. By golly, that was a big one. It's just super important to go slow because I'm just easing down through here. I would have never saw that fish up there, you know, if I was going fast. And, and you've got to make that decision. Some days the beds and the fish are easy to see and you can go faster, you know, with the water the way it is, all the cover. Today, going slow seems to be a lot better deal for me. Dang it, though, I wish I'd have caught that fish. I was seeing, I saw the, I saw two fish, and I'm like, I know that's not a bite. I see both fish. Well, there was a third one down beneath them. <laughs> and that's what the one, that was the big one. That's the one that had me. Dang it. one of them. Gosh dang it. Golly, that's a mean fish. Holy smokes. <laughs> that's a healthy fish right there. Oh, I got her. Come here, buddy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, isn't that a pretty fish? Look how pretty that fish is. Gosh dang it. Hey, when I'm choosing baits, like, you know, I talked earlier about white baits. Let me, let me, I want to talk about colors real quick. Man, that's a pretty fish. I like baits. If you're not going to use something white, I like baits that, that, that are real natural. Like to me, this is a, a green pumpkin baby blue. It just is perfect in this color water. It looks, you know, a lot like a bluegill. And that's what these bass are defending their beds against. You know, it's bluegill and turtles and it's just a, you know, little chigger crawl. 3 8 ounce weight, got it pegged, 25 pound test. 
It's just fun, guys. I, who, who does not love catching bass? Got her. This is a big one, boys. Gosh dang it. Look at this one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Look at this one. <laughs> this may be the biggest fish ever on Project D right here. One of them. Yes. Look at that. The bait fell right out right when I caught it. Oh, what a hammer. Yeah. God, I love bass fishing. Is that not a giant? Look at that fish. Yes, that's a big one. That's a big one. Man, the male kept biting up there, you know, but I, I, I could see this one and I could, I could tell it wasn't her biting, but she was super interested. We got her, we got her. Yes, 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 I love it. What a fish. All right, girl, go right back up there and do your deal. Go up there and do your deal. Oh, thank you, I just don't wanna let her go. All right, here she goes, here she goes. <laughs> man i kept saying i know that's a big one up there it's a big one it's a big one but i was just so far off i couldn't really tell so i scooted up just a little bit and uh changed up baits once again you know i tried the, the little gilly then i'd been throwing my chigger crawl then i put the big gilly in there and and let me show you what i did here just on how i rigged this thing if i can get it all out so i took and i took the hook off of a normal, man, it's all been up, but I put me a big Berkeley Fusion hook on there and uh, I just wanted a better hook. And then I put split rings in there just like that because I wanted it to sit like this. Because that way, if it sits like this, my bait sits upright in the bed, you know, just in how you rig a ghillie. I had it rigged sideways like this right here. Man, I'm shaking after catching that fish. So I, I had it just like that right there and you can see the hooks in the back. Just a neat, neat presentation. All right, let's catch the other one. I think there's another one up there. Let's see if we can get that one caught. Yes, that was fun. but I'm happy that I caught her. I hooked her in the bottom of the jaw. <laughs> oh, come here, fish. Come here, come here, come here. Look here. There's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Golly, I love it. I love it, I love it. Oh, man, we had her biting that gilly really, really quick. And then all of a sudden she started biting that one. What a pretty fish. Beautiful fish. Not a mark on her. Awesome. Awesome! Thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you. There you go. There she goes. Gosh, that's fun. That is so much fun. All right, guys, we got to do the power stop breakdown. Man, what a day. A lot of fun. Man, I caught a lot of fish on that bait right there. That's just a four inch Berkeley chigger crawl. Still shaking from catching those fish. So fun. Uh, green pumpkin blue, just a really good bluegill colored bait. I had that on a 4 aught fusion hook. You can tell that fusion hook seen as better days. 25 pound Bass Pro fluorocarbon. I've got that on a 3 8 ounce weight, a little bobber stop. Now to the meat, the 7 6 heavy action Johnny Morris platinum rod. Super key, super critical. When you get around big fish, have the right rod. You don't have too light a rod. Um, high speed reel to be able to take that slack up guys that stuff is important that caught a lion's share of them today there's a few other baits obviously that monster that i caught i want to show you guys that bait you guys are going to want to have some of this stuff rigged up right here again i got it on the same rod a 7.6 johnny morris heavy 25 pound test 
the Gilly. That's the 110 size. I think that, that color there is called Warmouth. I built my, uh, I built this little rig right here. I, I, it's, you know, I took the wire from something else. It's all bent from that fish catch earlier. Put some split rings in it because I wanted my hook to sit sideways. Say it pulls this way, this weight pulls it down. As you can see, now my hook sits sideways, thus making that bait sit vertical. That was really, that's really important to me. I can still make it weedless and that bait will sit vertical. Uh, I can pick it up and that, that bluegill just kind of, little gilly looks like it's eaten. But I've got that rigged on 25 pound Bass Pro fluorocarbon, same rod and reel. Uh, you know, I did have some, some, some action today on one other bait, a couple other baits actually. Uh, on that bait right there, the Agent E, you guys have seen a really awesome episode. If you haven't, you got to check it out. I caught, caught like an eight, nine pounder on that thing uh, on another lake here in Texas. Uh, I'll put a link right up here in the corner so you guys can go watch that episode. It's really cool. Today, I was using a half ounce version. That episode was a one ounce version. It's got a little microfiber weed guard, a little bluegill bait. Looks awesome. I've got this thing on 17 pound test, a 7.3 uh, Carbon Light 2.0. Uh, heavy action rod and again a high speed reel. One other thing that I used a little bit today uh, to get some fish fired up, caught a few little ones on it. Um, I just used the Gilly 90 on a little drop shot rig and I just used a straight shank hook, kind of went right up through the middle of it, then nose took the top like that. You can see there's the hook. Uh, I've got that on 10 pound test, 10 pound fluorocarbon. I've got it a 6'9 medium heavy. That's, I should have had it like on a 7'4 medium heavy. It wasn't enough rod to do what I was doing, thus why well, I lost some fish on it. Probably won't make the episode, but uh, um, good little bait to bed fish around. All right, guys, man, that's my episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Get out there, do a little sight fishing. It's going to help you become a better fisherman when you can't see them. That's such a key thing. You can see where they set up, you can see how many casts it take to get a fish to bite, how quiet you gotta be, how far you need to be. It helps me become a better fisherman when I'm flipping bushes and dirty water, flipping laydowns or reeds or whatever it is when I can't see them. So it really helps me a bunch. So get out there, do a little bit of it. I hope some of these tips helped you. Man, give me a thumbs up, give me that like button, be sure you're a subscriber. We will see you next week.